Andy Elliott. We're here at Elliott Guitars, and we're going to dive into a basic setup on a tremolo style guitar. The first thing you want to do when you get a guitar, if you like the guitar and you really like the way it plays, uh, my advice is, is to really do a good measurement overall of the guitar before you start messing with it, before you start playing it, before a period of time lapses. It's just good. If you if you pick it up and it just feels good to you and it feels right to you, it's good that you measure it and make a log of that. You know, get a little journal or a little notebook that you can keep a journal of, you know, the different guitars you have and how you like them to be set up. Because if you don't, when you go to a repair shop, they're going to do a basic setup and a kind of a one size fits all kind of thing if they don't know how you want your guitar set up. So the first thing I would do if you really like your guitar and if you've got one particular guitar that you like the way it plays, you can get some pretty basic essential tools like from Stumac, the string gauge. I like this string gauge because it gives you two measurements. It gives you the string height and it gives you the fall away. And the fall away is the way the neck is falls down and falls away from the 12th, like on our guitars that we build, it's from the 12th fret to the last fret. So you can kind of tell if you're, it just helps you know where the neck's at. And um, so it's a great tool. And the other tool you'll need is just a good rule. You know, one that measures in 64ths and 30 seconds and in inches. Stare it is a good brand. You, they're easy to read. A pair of wire cutters and a string crank. And you can have a hand crank. You don't have to have this powered one, but I'm lazy. So anyway, so you, you just, I like to measure guitars at the 12th fret. And you can see right here, I've got the inches and 64s right there. I'm at, I'm at a heavy 464s. And the fall away is going to a 0 .060 at the 14th fret. And you can go on as far down as you want and measure, you know, all the way down to the 16th, 17th fret. And that kind of gives you an idea of how the neck is adjusted there. The second thing you want to do is uh, check the relief on the neck. And the way you do that is you mash the string at the second fret and mash the string at the 12th fret. And at the fifth fret, you'll uh, have just a slight, maybe a half of a business card or less at the fifth fret is the way we set our guitars up and the way we do the board work. But some guitars are different. You have to do them different ways. But uh, relatively, our necks are pretty straight. And then you want to look down a neck. And when you look down a neck, you're looking at a couple different things. You're looking down the very edge of the neck to see how the neck relief is. Uh, you're not really looking for high and low frets there. You're just looking to see the curvature of the fingerboard itself. And so you're looking down the very edge. You don't want the neck to be bowed back and you don't want it to be bowed this way. You want it to look pretty straight. You know, not too straight, but not too much relief. Then you can look down the neck and get a reflection off the frets and you can see if you've got something catastrophically wrong, like a hump in the neck or something like that. You can usually see that pretty easy. Wow, I don't know who did this, but this neck looks really good. <laughs> Before we go on, you'll take this ruler. I like to, if your guitar sounds great and you love the way the pickups sound in it and where they're adjusted at, take this and mash your, but your high E string at the last fret. And you measure in 64 or in 30 seconds. I like to measure in 30 seconds. Uh, if I possibly can, it's just easier for me to read. Uh, but uh, measure again from the magnet to the bottom of the string. I always measure to the bottom of the string. That's just the way I do it. Some people do it different. That's just, to me, it's more accurate for me that way. 
and then you go to the low E string and measure from the magnet to the bottom of the string with it mashed at the 21st fret and uh, get your measurements from there for your pickup pipe adjustment and that way if something changes over the years or you take it to a repair guy and he doesn't do it right you know how to put it back right and uh, the way you want it and the way you like the way it sounded because you can adjust pickups and completely change the way a guitar sounds. Uh, it's not necessarily a right way and a wrong way. Uh, it depends on what sound you're going for and it depends on the guitar and it depends on the pickups. Um, you know, you may be playing something where you need to adjust your pickups different. Um, you know, that's that's a tool. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of different settings in there. I tend to like my pickups close. Uh, uh, not too close, but close and uh, different people have different flavors on that and, but you've got a lot of options you can do on pickups so it's if you got it the way you like it measure it make that journal make that log I just can't tell you how important that is so that you know how your guitar is set up the way you like it instead of just guessing at it and every style of guitar may set up a little different and you may like a uh, one particular guitar with the action lower than you like another guitar. You may have some certain guitar that you think it feels better with the action higher, with heavier strings. You may have another guitar that you think sounds better and has a certain tonality with a lighter gauge string and a closer setup. You know, there's, there's, there's all different kinds of things like that. And if you don't make a journal of that, you never know. And, you, and that way you can explore and always get your guitar back to the way you like it if you've made a journal. And one other thing on a uh, tremolo style guitar, um, there's several different kinds of tremolos out there and they some of them set up differently. Um, this particular one is a Vega trim and it's set up to set up flat and you can still bend back as, you know, a whole step, a step and a half, whatever you need to bend back with this tremolo. There's really no limit. And, uh, you know, some tremolos you have to set up at a pitch angle like this in order to bend it back a half step or whole step, depending on how you're wanting it to be as a player. Uh, and some people set them up flat. Um, a non-locking tremolo, it, it really needs to float in order to stay in tune. If it's going down against your body every time you use it, it's, it's not going to stay in tune as well. Okay, we're going to change strings here. And this particular guitar has vintage style tuners on it, locking tuners. And uh, these are very, very misunderstood by a lot of people. <laughs> So I'm gonna clear some of that up with you. They're very, very simple and easy to use. When you take a string off the guitar, you simply just loosen the string. Then you just take a penny. The little slot in this tuner is not made to put a screwdriver in and crank it and tighten it down or lock the string down. It's not how these tuners work. That's simply to take a coin and loosen it. So basically, you just turn it counterclockwise to loosen the lock. And once you get it loose, you can just sit here and keep loosening the string and it just loosens right up till the string sort of slides out of the tuner. And uh, that's really all they are to it. Uh, string slides right out.
And with the tremolos, um, all you do is you feed the string back through the block. Pull it forward. And it's important to make sure you get it pulled all the way out. Um, the thing with uh, tremolos and stuff, uh, there's a lot of different theories, but I don't like to use any more winding than I have to on a tuner. But when you've got six tuners in a line and a straight headstock and the headstock's not slanted, you, uh, you run into needing uh, a little bit of down pressure on the nut. It, you don't need a whole lot, just a slight bit. Uh, for it not to get harmonic, you can get some weird harmonics out of your nut, like the after it goes through the nut between your nut and the tuner. So I like to put enough winding on the strings to get them angled down just a little bit on a straight headstock. Like I said, a slanting headstock, you don't have to worry about it as much because you got a slant there. Um, and uh, your strings that are closer to the nut, you don't have to worry about it either because they automatically go down like that because they're closer to the nut. On the G and D string is where you start running into getting into the harmonic overtone between the tuner and the nut, more so the G string. That's why you see a lot of the older guitars from the 70s and stuff with two string trees. I personally don't like two string trees. The string trees can be problematic in tuning and stuff like that. And the less stuff a string has to move through, the better it's gonna stay in tune in my opinion. Uh, so I don't put a second string tree on and, in, and a lot of guitars don't have, but if they don't have, you, it's important to get a little bit of down downward angle from the nut to the tuner. And uh, so I like to wind those strings all the way down to the grommet, just not touching the grommet, but almost. And uh, that gives you the perfect amount of down pressure and uh, usually don't have the problems out of the nut getting harmonic overtone. And with these locking tuners, what's really cool, uh, you just pull them through like that right there. You don't tighten, you don't try to tighten nothing up. All you do is just pull the string tight and uh, turn the tuner post, make sure it's going counterclockwise and it will automatically, once it starts getting tight, it'll start turning. And for a while, it won't turn, but just keep going. It'll, it'll eventually start turning, and that's the way the string's locked at that point. And then I just take this and stretch it up just a little bit, like this right here, just seat it real good, and that locks this in at the tuner. That's a compression lock, and it's plenty of pressure to lock that string and it works great. And that's really all they are to it. And don't be one of them guys that leaves your strings hanging off your headstock <laughs> because you won't believe it. But when that string bends like that, it changes the core strength of that string. And you can hook it up to a tuner if you don't believe me. And I can hear that with my own ear. I can hear the note change just by me bending that string. So if you got tuners, antennas flopping around everywhere and you're moving around on stage, guess what? Your tuning's moving around too. Okay, well that wraps it up for today. Uh, thanks for coming by the shop and spending some time with us here. Um, it's always a joy. And I hope this is some helpful information. Uh, please hit the like button and subscribe so that you can keep up with some future videos that we're going to be doing periodically on setup and basic main, how to maintain your guitars. And we'll be coming out with some more videos and hope you liked it and hope it can help you. Thank you.